Welcome once again to The Breakfast. We're going straight into the newspaper review this morning. We've, uh, of course, been joined by Ezekiel Nyaetok, who's uh, going to be having a quick say about some of the major stories. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Always a pleasure. Good to have you. Let's quickly start with stories from the Punch newspapers this morning, see what we can quickly find there. Um, it says there, federal government commissioners meet over sharing of 3.9 million vaccine doses today. Cano expects 155,000 doses. Delta plans to vaccinate 3 million residents. Uh, we've uh, received our consignment, says Edo State. No state has received allocation, the agency says. Where did Edo receive theirs from then? Um, we will know our allocation on Thursday's meeting, says the Plateau, Com uh, Plateau State Commissioner, I beg your pardon. Also, Cattle, foodstuff traders end blockade, visit presidency over demands. And the end SARS protest, 25 insurance company to, companies to pay 20.4 billion Naira claims and 1,021, uh, 29 megawatts stranded due to gas shortage and unpaid invoices. We also can find on the punch, Senate recommends PPP for ad abandoned Badagri Sokoto Highway construction. Song Wolu sounds tough as trucks return to Apapa Highway. I saw you did a, a quick uh, report on that uh, yesterday. Yes, I did. All right, and also police uh, Amotekun comb Oshun bushes as, as gunmen kill one and abduct travelers. Mother of Rapai legally detained by Nigerian army seeks Buhari's help. And uh, also Gumi should withdraw his unpatriotic divisive utterances. That's also on the uh, Punch newspapers this morning. And, um, well, I think we can just uh, feed off these ones this morning. Mr. Ezekiel Nyaitok, let's uh, have you quickly get into it. Yes, sir. Um, first, um, you know, we read some of these headlines and we really don't, you know, go behind and interrogate how it affects us as a people and what governance should all have, be all about. Look at the headlines. You know, federal government you know, and commissioners meet the oversharing of the vaccines. Some people say we've gotten it already. Others are saying we are going to get it. Why can't we just set up to do something? Everybody understands the template and everybody is on the same page. Why do we have to have this at all times? Incoherence, you know, we're not sure is it this way or the other way. As at today, every Nigerian ought to know that the vaccines are coming. First it was, when will it come? Will it come? Will it not come? And all those things. And we just kept wondering, wondering, wondering. Now they've arrived. The next is that every Nigerian should have known before today that as the vaccines are coming, this is the formula we are adopting. We are going to target this category of people we are profiling the states along these lines. States, the records show. If you have been hiding your cases, you can't blame us. We just work with the records. The records show that this state has this amount of concern and these and these. Let there be transparency. Let there be accountability. That will make people to know that if a situation arises, I must be honest because I'm going to be judged best on my record. If not so, we just know, don't worry, we'll negotiate. Don't worry, go, don't worry, don't worry. That, that don't worry syndrome has become a national malaise. And the federal government, I was expecting that this government coming with the mantra of transparency, accountability, incorruptibility, would have addressed these issues. And trust me, it's almost worse. So I'm looking forward to that administration, and I think I hold, I don't, I no longer hold government responsible these days. I hold us citizens responsible because we get what we deserve. So oh. the vaccines have come in, and um, that's that about that. Well, I really good, can't good tell thing we have. Uh, level, we we will be having a yet. conversation this morning with uh, the Minister of State for Health, uh, Senator Oloro Nimbe Mamora. He will, of course, be. I, I, don't, I don't look at, be, please, with all due respect. It's not this morning I want to hear that conversation. I yeah. should have heard what they're going to say today, two weeks back. 
Well, right the, the now, PTF already, the, the PTF already had put out, you know, details on how they were going to be distributing it to frontline workers and government, you know, certain government officials first. But you know, I, I'm saying that la later question? today, I'm saying later today we would, you know, have a conversation with him. You know, you might see it as late, but you know, better late than never. So of course, uh, our viewers can understand better what their plans are. Um, I, I want us to then speak on the blockade. The North, um, yes. uh, the st story says, cattle and foodstuffs traders uh, end blockade, visit presidency over demands. So I want your thoughts on, on that and how the presidency handled that um, um, two or three days of you know, chaos with regards to blockade of food uh, being sold to other parts of the country. You know, this North-South talk we talk about all the time, I've tried to wrap my head around it, and it gives me a lot of problems to really understand the north-south divide in Nigeria. In real terms, outside of being a good political bargaining tool, I am from here, a quite a bomb state. My wife is from Imo. I have two sons. The two sons I have, one has gone to Kogi, another one has gone to Benue to marry. So where do I stand in my house? Am I north? Am I south? Where am I? My only two sons. One has gone to Kogi already with one general's daughter. The other one has gone to um, Benue. The, 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 the. So where am I? Where, where is my family? Then the people from the so-called north are blocking food stuff to the south. And yet my partner is here in Uyo. He's from the north. He's from, he's from, uh, he's from, from where? From Katsina. So what is he going to eat? So who are they punishing? Meanwhile, my own friends are there in, 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 in Maiduguri, and they are enjoying the food, and they are from the south. So the question is really, what are we doing? Let me tell you what, what it is. When you need something, the Nigeria of today, make noise about it. Get militants about it. Do as if they are going to call people, and then they will invite you to the table to negotiate. In which case, doing the right thing is not the right way to go. And it is a mentality that we need to explore as Nigerians. The world operates on certain basic fundamentals of sincerity, of focus, of honesty, of integrity, these are the fundamentals that take a nation from one level to the next. And for as long as we do not explore these fundamentals and lay premium on them, for so long will we continue to be a nation that goes in no direction. Right. I'm looking right. forward to our younger people to be able to help us to get us from where we, the older people, have dumped this country, very sadly. Uh, Mr. Nia this this very you know important story is still on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. And they put it this way, buckle up on food production. Experts warn South governors. And then it says, if tiny Israel could feed itself, why not Northeast? And moving on from that story, uh, this one here says, Northeast governors seek foreign assistance in insurgency fight. FEC OKs 813 billion naira for road, water, other projects nationwide. Northern governors accused of turning kidnapping to money spinner. Uzodim map paid group 1 billion naira to recall me, says Okorcha. And we also see the story of, uh, you know, the COVID-19 vaccines. It says important vaccines from India exposes countries failing health institutions. Uh, Mr. Nihato, this is the stories here. Uh, I wonder yeah. if you would love to talk about yeah. this one, about uh, security. Uh, it's still on another paper. We see f you know, northern governors like Zulum yeah. telling the government, telling the federal yeah. government to seek foreign support to end insurgency. Yeah. You, you know, when you have a battery that has a problem, there are two ways you do that battery. I can tell you that because for a long time in my life, I knew what it means to have a car not start. So you have two ways to get about it. The first is that you get another battery and you jump start. Boom, immediately it starts. The second is that you take the battery to the car to the battery charger and you put it in um, in the light. They call it put down for light. That will take a long time, 
a lot of times it's overnight. So it charges the battery overnight for a long time. The Northern governors say that, look, we've come to a situation where the security uh, apparatus is failing and we are dying. Can you please help us to jumpstart the, the, the peace in the land, the security in the land, by bringing in people to just root out these people violently and, I mean, just, there will be collateral damages, but that's what life is all about. And we Nigerians must know that if you are going to have the omelet, you are going to have to break the shell. All you want to do is look for a way of nicely breaking that shell, that that shell has to break. Where we are today, there is we've brought ourselves where collateral damage is almost inevitable because this act of negotiation has to end. These people, a certain fear must be driven into... You see, when you commit a crime, you are either emboldened or you are a daredevil, you know? But when committing that crime becomes, you know, very easy, people who are just sitting and watching, and they, will, they will be tempted to say, wow, that's, this makes sense. Why don't they even try it? Because they are people in borderline. When you go against, I like it when the federal government now says, if you see anyone with AK-47, shoot the person at sight. Shoot the person, mm -hmm. okay? Now, all those that were brandishing, you know those pictures that we saw brandishing their AK-47 and all that. I, didn't, I think they are going to have a meeting tonight and say, look, what's going on? What's going on? Is our protector, if they thought it that way, are they changing their minds? And a lot of people are going to start to say, without AK-47, you can't do proper, you can't do the, the effective banditry and all those things. Mm -hmm. So I think that what the Northern governors have said uh, makes sense. I subscribe to it. We need foreign help so that we just like hit this thing, but let it have a timeline, let it have a program, let it be a project that has a budget, a timeline, a target. Those three fundamentals first. Wow. And then there's another part of that um, story, Northern governors accused of turning kidnapping into money spinner. I think that we should interrogate that matter because people are starting to look for money for elections for 2023, and unfortunately, the people that we entrusted our common patrimony are abusing our trust. So that particular story should be interrogated, should be made a headline, should be really, really looked into, and citizens should rise and demand accountability on how our monies are spent by the government. All right. Um, interesting um, perspectives there. Uh, now let's move to the nation newspapers um, quickly and see what we can find. Um, like you already had spoken about, the presidency says bandits carrying AK-47 to be shot on sight. Also, NSARS, $2 million, 17 million naira stolen from my palace, says Obakiolu. Also, uh, 2.3 million registered for COVID-19 vaccination within 24 hours. Broadcaster actor Sadiq Daba is dead. And we spoke about that earlier um, on the program this morning. Food sellers, cattle dealers, and north-south blockade. Also, uh, this morning on the nation, northeast states uh, to OK state police. 15 Ogoni pollution sites cleared, says the federal government. And also two policemen killed. I'm not sure where that happened or why. Um, of course, a follow-up on the AK-47 story. Choppers to ferry weapons and food to bandits in Zamfara. Or rather, choppers ferry weapons and food to bandits in Zamfara. Why federal government declared no-fly zone in the state? ACF calls for extension of action to Borno, Benue, Taraba uh, states. All right, um, Usain, I talk. Uh, let, let's uh, yeah. have you kick off uh, a little further on the order of uh, shoot on site for bandits. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, do, yeah. do you would you you know agree that maybe was, we should, you know, get into that level of? You know, there, uh, there's something. Go ahead, yes, please. there's something that people have always quoted our, pres our former president, um, uh, president or former president of Basanjo. And a video came online you know, not long ago that really went viral. And this was when he was the president. He was a Yoruba man. The OPCs were just bringing, so they were intimidating people the way we saw it. And he said, shoot them. You understand me? If they resist, shoot them because they cannot bring us to our knees in this country. And, and you could see 
that that honesty, sincerity. You could see that that anger, righteous indignation. And he wasn't going to have any of it because I've been elected the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And don't tell me because you're from my area, you're going to bring, bring my, 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 my administration down. It's not going to happen. I'm asked to protect Nigeria and I will do it no matter what it costs me. I don't care, you know? And, you know, I think this is the first bold statement, to the best of my knowledge, that Mr. President has made in this regard. And I would say I commend him. Like you talked about the minister talking, he might come late, but better late than never. So but, I subscribe but Mr. to that, Mr. Your, talk. your statement. Um, you've just yes. stated that you commend him. But, but is, it, is it an order like that not evidence of a failed criminal justice system? Because for you to shoot a bandit, you have to see a bandit that is armed uh, before you can shoot. And that means that we should be able to arrest same bandit. I mean, if you can see the bandit, you should be able to arrest him. So instead of a shoot on site order, why aren't we, or why don't we see that as a failure to arrest criminal bandits, prosecute them, and imprison Brother. them? Brother, there's a difference between drama and the reality. You see a man with AK-47 and you want to arrest that person, he will arrest your life before you arrest him. So, and you think a man with AK-47 is going to wait for you to say, hey, come here, come here, and he will come. He didn't carry that thing as a toy. And these are not people who are not thinking like you. So I believe that this should go to a warning to all of them. But desperate times call for desperate measures. We are in desperate times. We may need to. That's why I say, look, because of international convention, declare them terrorists. They are de they, you know, look at what is terrorism. You know, they are already terrorists. So just make that local pronouncement. For instance, if you notice in the, you know, this school that invaded the Capitol Hill, you know, um, uh, you know, before um, Trump left office, they have just been declared local terrorists. Once you give that declaration then you are entitled to exact a certain level of force on them. So what am I trying to say? Let this rule are terrorists, and you do not negotiate with terrorists. You take them out. So okay. I agree with Mr. President. Mr. Right. Nieto, let's turn finally to daily independent newspaper. It's still the story about security yeah. and the reaction of Northern governors. Zulum to FG seek foreign support to end insurgency. He goes on to say to ask the government to hire machineries to prosecute terrorists. Shoot anyone with AK-47, Buhari tells security agents. FG approves establishment of SIM swap centers in 774 local government areas, extends tenure of enrollment licensed agents to five years, Northern traders end blockade of food trucks to north to south. FG to reconstruct Abuja, Kaduna, Kanu Highway at 797.2 billion naira. Kato Rares must pay for land to ranch on in Oyo State, and that's according to Governor Mackinde. Uh, this one says, one shot dead as youth battle security operatives in Jangibi, Zamfara State. And no-fly zone PDP alleges plots to impose states of emergency in Zamfara. ACF asks Buhari to declare Benri Taraba Bonu no-fly zones. Ms. Anyadjo, we've been talking on security for the past few minutes. I want us to shift our focus now to infrastructure development. The presidency has been speaking about this. We even had uh, the presidential uh, aide yesterday talk about the launch of a public-private partnership, which is called InfraCore. The Central Bank of Nigeria and other stakeholders have been investing one trillion naira into infrastructure development. And here the federal government has, uh, you know, pumped in 797.2 billion naira to reconstruct the Abuja Kano Kaduna Highway. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Okay. Um, I'll, come, I'll come as simple as can be on this matter. Number one is that 
have been the consultant to our state government on housing. And when they wanted to build houses, three bedroom bungalows, we were building them at 12.5 million, two toilets, okay? Now, I am doing a PPP with the federal government, and we have free toilet, okay? And there, you know, guest toilet, that's four. And I'm selling them to civil servants at eight, five, eight. okay? Meanwhile, government is three bedroom with only two toilets, almost 4.5 million. PPP is the way to go. Now, if the one I'm doing, not only is it coming cheaper, the government does not need to bring a dime to build the houses. I'm bringing 100% of the money. So government just gives me land and some infrastructure. And they are going to have this building that are cheaper, they are better. So we need to explore this PPP. Option. All this okay. government going to borrow billions and billions from, from China and India right. and from wherever, and then execute projects at cost that are probably five, six times what should be. They are living debt to us. Let them get into the public partnership. That is a better way to go. All they need to do is create the enabling environment and it's right. right. It's already that. working and directly in what we want. I'm all to another state as we speak, and it's working. All right. Um, well, like you said, it sounds like a you know a great idea, and we hope that it does uh, happen seamlessly um, in the next uh, few years. Thank you very much, Ezekiel Yai Talk. Thank you. Uh, we always love speaking with you. We're looking forward to another conversation. Anita is looking particularly bright this morning. I love your pink. <laughs> really great. <laughs> Thank you. Arita. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Let's now turn to today in history after the break. <laughs>